And this is Jeff McMahon with the Backstage Pass, powered by the Sports Guys, brought to you by uh, all of our uh, appreciated sponsors, Bangtail Whiskey, Mitch Max, and of course, Hank Jr. Productions. And we are excited today to be talking to Mr. Dallas Wayne. A lot of you guys will already know Dallas from the countless days you spend with him on Willie's Roadhouse but uh, also an artist in his own right. He's got a new project coming out. And Dallas, thanks for hanging out with us and sharing the new project with us. Well, thanks, Jeff. It's my pleasure. Good to be here. Um, I know uh, a lot about uh, kind of how your um, you know, music dances with what you do on radio, but uh, if you could just kind of give us uh, maybe a quick explanation of, of, of how you dance the radio side of you and the artist side of you, because a lot of people tend to think it's one or the other. You've managed to excel at both. How do you uh, how do you juggle that? It, it seems funny because over the last couple of years, I'll be going out and doing a a, a, a tour uh, with you know Bill Anderson or Connie Smith or the Oak Ridge Boys, somebody like that. And I'll be at the record table at the end of the night, and somebody said, well, we, we know you're on the radio. We didn't know you sung. And it's like, I've been doing this for 50 years, a <laughs> good grief. And, you know, but that's, they don't know, they don't know the 13 records before this one, and uh, they don't know a lot of things. All they know is what they heard, what they've heard on the radio. And you kind of, kind of, you got to compartmentalize it uh, to a degree, but you also got to, you got to balance your time too. That's the most important thing is try to get, get it all done. Sure. Well, and, and apart from managing the, the time side of it, um, how, how do you kind of shift in and out of that artist mindset? I mean, I'm sure you, are are better able to connect to some of the artists because you know kind of what they're going through as artists right yeah i i love doing interviews especially with people i've known for years and uh that always helps number one and with your listeners it all it all goes back to entertaining you you do your best to, if you're sitting down on a stool with a guitar in a, in a theater somewhere you're doing your best to entertain the folks that are there and it's the same thing on the radio and you just got to envision that they're behind beyond that microphone that you're talking into and you know do your best to relate to them every day right right well i know that with this new project i say i know I don't know this, but I suspect <laughs> that, um, that now that things are starting to open up and you're going to have new music to share, that you're going to be taking some of this out on the road and, and performing, yes? Yes. Uh, we're, our plans are to, to do a lot more touring this this summer than we've done, obviously, than we've done the last two years. Because right. I went from... Uh, uh, the year before, in 2019, I did 110 dates, and the year of mm -hmm. COVID 2020, I did three. <laughs> this year, right. I did the Opry several times. I did the Iowa State Fair, and uh, I did uh, a gig up in Buffalo, New York, and I believe that's all of them. I got one coming up in March uh, there in Bristol with the Mavericks that I'm looking forward to, but that'll be the first time in three months sitting in right. front of people and singing. So it's going to be right. fun. Well, and I think is that is that the show? Um, uh, is that the show that you've got? Is it Red Vocal playing guitar with you, or y yes? Or you know, Red and I have a long history. We go back twenty five years with uh, right. Twang Bangers, and we both were on high tone at the same time. That's how we met. Right. And then uh, in Hay Bale, uh, the band there in Austin that we were in for years. Uh, Red and I have both left Austin and live in, yeah. uh, lives in Virginia. I live in Tennessee. He's not that far from me. And so we went up to uh, Buffalo. We hadn't done a, a show together in over a year. And this is, you know, this is somebody that I've, I've worked with solidly for 20. And right. uh, it was kind of weird. And we realized how much we missed it. And so we decided we were going to try to get back and do uh, just an acoustic thing. Just have Red come in and play guitar. And, uh, right. And do some stuff off the new record and have some fun because he's so much fun to travel we've been we've been all over the world together and and i i just love him he's he's my doppelganger <laughs> well he um you know one of the things that i enjoy having been in this business for a long time and i know you have too is 
it's so fun to see how some of the things come back around and tie back together things that you didn't expect to resurface mm. later. Um, one of my first club band experiences was a club in San Angelo and red was playing guitar in that band. And that was before he went out with, uh, Neil McCoy and all that. So, um, so yeah, when I was going through a lot of your stuff and finding all these neat connections, it was like, I was there for, I know, I, how did I miss that? I saw, I, there's a lot that I didn't even know about. So it's great. Well, I know yeah. you've got, um, a lot of new music. Tell us a little bit about, um, this collection of songs, how you put these songs together. I know you're about to, uh, I think release your first single on February 25th. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, kind of give us the idea of, of this new project and putting it back together. Well, uh, the album is called Cold Water Tennessee, uh, mm -hmm. and how how it started. My last two albums were uh, collections of country covers, uh, songs that you box taught me, Volume One and Volume Two. Right. And but I, and so I'd kind of gotten away from songwriting and that part of what I do, and I thought I need to make one more record, uh, and kind of get back into the songwriting thing. And I was talking to Buddy Cannon. Uh, on the phone, uh, mm -hmm. we were just visiting. He said, "What are your plans for you know for this year?" And I said, "Well, I'd kind of like to do one more record. I think I got well, at least one more in me, maybe two, but I'd like to go back and and do an uh, original project and and work on work on the songwriting side of what I do." And he said, "I'd be honored if you'd let me produce it." Yeah, and. Uh, which was above and beyond, you know, uh, there's friendship and then there's holy cow friendship, you know. Sure. And, uh, and he said, I'll tell you what you do. He said, think about it. He said, send me a bunch of songs. All I want is guitar and vocal demos. I don't want previously recorded versions. I don't want nothing. I just want guitar and vocal demos and let's pick out the best songs out of that pile and play them and, and make an album. So I sent him about 20, 25 songs, I guess, probably total. And we came came up with these uh, ones we got on the project here, and working with him, and he's such a you know he's Hall of Fame songwriter uh, uh, over and above being an award winning producer, uh, and so he knows a great song when he hears one, and uh, he knows what works and what doesn't, and he was really good in in helping me pick out these songs and kind of choose. You know, they say songs are children. That's BS, but, but you know. It's pretty close. It's, it's yeah. not that inaccurate. Uh, you know, you you have a piece of you in every song you write, and uh, so it's kind of hard for you to be an objective judge of it. So I was really pleased with the selection he made because I knew them all because I wrote them. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, and I've I've listened to most of the record. Uh, thank you guys for sending it over early. Um, and and I hear the colors of a lot of my favorite artists and songwriters that. I know influenced me and I'm thinking, I wonder if he was, if he's a fan of this guy or that guy, because I hear all these, these great colors of like, um, one of the things that, that really struck me was, uh, under the overpass, um, on that song. And, and it, it reminds me so much of the way I felt when I heard, um, in the ghetto, uh, not the Elvis version, but the Mac Davis version. Um, sure, yeah. if you remember Mac and the, the storytelling of that and, the all the pictures that you painted with cold water, Tennessee, which, um, was just great. Um, I think the, the first single, did you say the first single is going to be, I hit the road and the road hits back. I had the road and the road hit back. Yeah. 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 I spent enough years on the road. I know where that one came from. <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking earlier about, about, you know, you, when you're, 16, 17 years old and you get ready to go out on tour, you have all these preconceived notions about what it's going to be like and it just doesn't work out that way. You know, it's uh, yeah. it's darker versions or, or more problem-filled versions of all the things you'd dream that would be great. Sure, but sure. You still go out and you can't wait to go back out again, you know, for the next tour. I know. We keep signing up for it, don't we? <laughs> don't we? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we know any better. I, I think that's probably true. Um, well, I know you're going to play something for us off off the record. What are you going to play for us and um, give us an idea of, of what we can expect from this? I thought I'd play the title track to the record, Coldwater, Tennessee, if that's okay. Great. Great. Well, let's hear Coldwater, Tennessee. 
Wrote this with Robbie Folks. Pine Log Shack, half a mile off the state road. Daddy took our jobs, Mama raised us three. Times were mean, but our home was a haven. It was all we had in Coldwater, Tennessee. Tougher than hell, daddy sang like an angel. The rhythm of the mountain seemed to set him free. One night he ran, headed north with his Martin, and everything we'd saved in Coldwater, Tennessee. Rusted dreams turned gold in Nashville, the stars right high and the satellites beam. Pretty love song. As you remember All the way on down To Coldwater, Tennessee Nightline reads Local man hits the big time Just look at those clothes And his brand new family Lying in bed Staring at the picture of the favorite son of Coldwater, Tennessee. Rusted dreams turn gold in Nashville. The stars ride high and the satellite beams. Pretty love songs, voices you remember. All the way on down to Coldwater, Tennessee. Teenage kid on a one-way ticket. Tonight he's bound for the Opry. By the backstage door, he'll stand in the shadows. Like he did so long in Coldwater, Tennessee. The crowd draws close, the backstage door swings open. The cameras flash, and all the pretty girls scream. Then a burst of fire and a shout from the shadow. This is from your fans in Coldwater, Tennessee. Rusted dreams turn gold in Nashville. The stars ride high for a while it seems. But tomorrow at dawn, there'll be one star falling as they carry him down to Coldwater, Tennessee. Yeah, they bury him there in Coldwater, Tennessee. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Coldwater, Tennessee. Man, I my my favorite part of that whole record was when you said rusted dreams, and I just thought 
I thought that is just such a great image, a great, oh. a great phrase, a great picture. Um, so much of this record is that good old school dance, swinging doors and sawdust floor stuff. Sure, is that on purpose? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, what is what is the old Whalen line? I couldn't go pop with a mouthful of firecrackers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that's probably the case in this in this record too. Country music or, or bluegrass music in the beginning is all I've ever done uh, for a living, and I've been blessed to do it for uh, forty eight years now. Yeah, and yeah. It's, well, it's it's kind of what I do, and I. I, I no sense in changing now at my age, I guess. <laughs> that, hey, we do what we do, man. We do what we do. I'm I'm so excited to to see how this comes out. Um, I'm back and lonelier than ever. I loved. Um, I did see one thing that I have to touch on um, because I'm jealous that I saw in your resume. I would love one time to play LM in Pump Boys and Dinettes. <laughs> Did I see that you played in Pump Boys and Dinettes with oh, yeah. with some of the original guys? Mm -hmm. Give me the, give me just the, a short take on that. Well, I I, I love the original cast of Pump Boys and Dinettes. I got to know them after they left Broadway and moved to Chicago and were there at the Apollo Theater for years, and then uh, they decided they were going to open up a theater in Branson get the original Broadway cast together and all go down there and live. So it's really fun to see all these New Yorkers coming to Branson to live. Branson is where is my home. Uh, it's where my family's from. Gotcha. And uh, so it was fun coming back home and doing that show, number one, and and, uh, and enjoying the, the experience that they had after years of being in Manhattan or, or down in downtown Chicago to, to move to Branson, Missouri and actually try to live there. It was fun. It was a great experience, and and uh, I love the part. You know, the the play is so much fun. Uh, it, it still stands up today. They had a reunion recently over the internet of the original cast of uh, Smoke on the Mountain, the, another play that I'd done over the years, mm -hmm. and a lot of those guys got the inspiration for Smoke on the Mountain. The, the writers and producers and the early actors on that, uh, which Harry Chapin had put together the music for, they got the inspiration from the success of Pump Boys and Dinettes, which is still around. You can still got find it, it uh, find the play on uh, touring groups and uh, and local production companies putting it up, and local theater companies. Yeah, it's still around. Well, it was a great show. The thing I loved about it is the way they integrated all the music and to put all those pieces together for a live production, which is a lot of what you do now, taking all your road experience and recording experience and radio experience and music knowledge and, and putting it all together for a project like this. So I know I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to the single. Um, tell us, tell everybody how to find you, where you want them to look for this. Uh, you can always go to DallasWayne.com, uh, drops the line. We've got all our tour schedules up there and our merch stuff is up there as well. Uh, you can get the album through Amazon or any wherever you buy your records or wherever you have yeah. your music delivered to you these days, whether in what form, it's all covered with the release of this record. It's out on Audium uh, Nashville. It's a wonderful label of guys and uh, who really believe in the music and do it for the right reasons. and. Uh, you can find it just about anywhere. Fine music is sold. They'll have an extra section over there after the fine music. You'll have the, the other other stuff, and that's where you'll the find it. The rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. I know you've got a busy day sharing the news about this project, so I appreciate your carving out some time for us. Uh, Dallas Wayne, Coldwater, Tennessee, look for it, and uh, hope you have a great day and a great release. Thanks for great. sharing this Thank with us, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jeff. Be safe. I will. You too, sir.